Yes, Carl. Are you in the car yet? I'm still in the villa. I need to be in Milan within the hour. What do you need? Oh, you're in the villa? What do you think of the renovations? It's gorgeous, Carl. What do you need? I was calling to make sure you approved more funding for Nick. Yes, Carl. I was checking because, to be frank, I don't trust him. You don't have to. Will that be all? I know that you value my input, and I may have seen a side of him you haven't. He is disrespectful of the organization and speaks ill of people. Carl, I wrote the book on people and their motives, literally. Nick is useful to the program. He's a simple man who likes money. It's a win-win, Carl. My fear is that he may try to- Your fear, Carl? Really? I thought you'd be further along in that area. My concern is that he... you may be underestimating him. Maybe I'm overestimating you. Do your job. Take care of Lindsay. Ladies, my name's Detective James, and this is my partner, Detective Jackson. What have you got for us? I think you're gonna wanna take a listen to this. I've been having dreams about Zuli. I can see the shadow of the deceiver closing in on her. In the dream, I see a young Damon. He holds someone like bait in a trap, and Zuli is in danger. Who is this? Why is she using that name? Is this some sort of joke? Gracie, this is not a joke. This is your mother. No, no, no. My mother is dead, so there is no way that this could be her. That is impossible. This may have something to do with Lindsay. You have to keep her in the light. And who is this? They think it's my mother. So this doesn't have anything to do with Lindsay? Maybe Lindsay's the bait. To catch what? What or who is Zuli? There's so much more to this than you think. We're gonna have to tell them. You're going to need to keep an open mind. Let me get the chief in here on this. He's gonna wanna hear it. Where's your band of merry men? <laughs> this is the easiest way and quietest way to keep my aim sharp. Still got it. You're up mighty early. Yeah. Something really big happened last night. Something good? Yeah. It was kind of like I met my dad for the first time. I think I really helped him, so thanks. What are you thanking me for? For, you know, stopping me the other day. Glad I was there. Is all this stuff yours? Well, I guess it is. The people I bought the place from offered to get rid of all this stuff, but I, I kind of like it. So, uh, you want to give it a try? 
Um, sure. What do I do? You take an arrow, three feathers. The odd colored feather goes on top. Put it right above that little notch. And you're going to pull back to the corner of your mouth. Look right down the arrow and let it. Ah, sin. What? When you miss the mark, it's called sin. Here, you try. That's it. Odd color other on top. Right at it. Wow. <laughs> well, even the best marksman can't be perfect 100% of the time. I mean, there's no such thing as perfect, is there? Just different degrees of imperfect. Well, without the perfect, you can't have the imperfect. Without a standard, you don't know if you're missing it or not. I guess, but do you really think there's anything that's perfect? I mean, everyone wishes for it, but, you know. I asked my uncle that one time. I didn't like his answer. Why not? Well, I was uh, just coming back from Vietnam. I was disillusioned and was drifting around. And my uncle fought in World War II, so he understood me. He gave me a place to stay. In fact, that's how I got into archery. He, uh, he didn't like all the noise I made every time I wanted to target practice. Sounds like a pretty cool guy. Yeah, very much so. Uh, we talked a lot about archery, about how the bullseye is the mark, but no one can hit it all the time. Now, life is imperfect. It, uh, it's messy. He quoted C.S. Lewis to me, that if we find ourselves with a deep desire that we can't fulfill in this world, then we must be made for another world. I mean, I've definitely felt that before, but what's wrong with that? Well, at the time, it was all about me finding my purpose. That quote implies a creator. And maybe my creator had a purpose for me. But, but what if that purpose is not what I wanted? So I thought, ah, it's just easier to believe that all this is just, just meaningless. So, I guess we're talking about God now, right? That He's the Creator. And it all comes down to whether or not you trust Him. That He knows what's best for you, even more than you do. And that He loves you. That's exactly what it comes down to. I can't make out what she's saying. So who is Zuli? I am. Apparently, I was named after some voodoo spirit, or Zuli, but I've always just gone by Zuli ever since I was younger. It was given to me by my mother, and I didn't know the origin of it until last night, and apparently she was some sort of witch. She preferred to be called a voodoo queen. OK, so Ella is our half-sister. We have the same mother, different fathers. After our father died, our mom got caught up with this gambler from the French Quarter. He was a descendant of Dr. John. Oh. Yeah. Who's Dr. John? He's the guy that was thought to have brought voodoo to New Orleans in the 1800s, and they'd call him King John or Bayou John. That's right. So as Ella grew up, she was considered special because of her father. She was so obsessed with the occultic world and got into anything she could get her hands on, witchcraft, tarot, anything really. You know, rich, powerful, wealthy men from all around the city, they would come and pay for readings and potions and spells. They kept getting richer, so they kept coming. She wanted her daughter to follow her as queen and for the father to be of the bloodline of Dr. John. Bloodlines are important in that world. Yes, yeah, she found a man who was a distant cousin. And when Gracie was born, a baby girl, marked with the heart and sword. They all thought she was the incarnation of Urzuli, the spirit of love. Grace, we've met before. I started my career in New Orleans, and 
I was there the night your mother was arrested. You knew her? I knew you. You couldn't have been more than three or four years old. But you knew my mother. I knew who she was. I never knew her personally, and heck, everybody knew who she was. I can only tell you that I've never been a believer in coincidence, and the fact that we're all sitting around this table together is nothing short of a miracle. So you attend Tulane? Yes, ma'am. Oh, what are you studying? I'm studying law, actually. Oh, I have a niece at Tulane. Perhaps the two of you should meet. <laughs> Maybe. Here we are. This will give you a list of all the inmates. Since you know years and not names, this is where you should start. Does this list wardens and chaplains? Warden records are there, but we don't have records of the chaplains. Sorry. Well, I'm glad you're talking to me again. I've had a lot going on recently. Sorry about that. What did you want to talk about? What do you mean? You texted me last night. You said you wanted to talk. Oh, yeah, right. But what do you mean you've had a lot going on? <laughs> no, first, what did you want to talk about? Well, I took this class thing yesterday after school, and it made me think of you. What kind of class? It's about knowing what to do when you're concerned that someone might be thinking about suicide and with the loss you've had with your mom and you know just other things you just seem very isolated lately and with all of those things sometimes a person might think about suicide have you been having those thoughts? You took that class yesterday. Yes. Are you trying to change the subject? No. No, it's just... Last night, my dad told us that our mom's death wasn't an accident. She left a note before she did. And I'm honestly glad he told us because when I read the note, I felt like she would understand how I feel sometimes. I mean, now I get why dad was so upset and how bad it would have been if I had actually gone through with it. But it's like when you're in that moment and everything's pressing in on you and you just can't see clearly, I just wonder, I just wonder if my mom had given it one more day. If she would have seen things differently, like me. I'm so sorry about your mom. But are you saying that you have been thinking about suicide? And acting on them? I got interrupted. I still don't know if I would have actually gone through with it. Obviously, I'm, I'm fine now. What you're telling me is really important, Ryan. I want to connect you with the chaplain who taught the class I took. He, he can help you know what to do about those thoughts because there's a chance they'll come back. Yeah, yeah, I can meet with him. Hey, um, Detective James, I've been meaning to give you this. And I just wanted to say, whenever you're ready to talk about the kids and Shelly, I definitely think that we need to go ahead and get them into some sort of counseling soon. It's okay. I talked to him last night. You did? Yeah. And um, you were right. It was like opening up a pressure valve. Okay. What is it? I mean, I've just been 
meaning to get with you about making an appointment to talk to the counselor and then my aunts came with all this and I'm just starting to realize that I really dropped the ball. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't start beating yourself up. You've gone through a lot. What you do for families and what you did for my family, you really helped us. Thank you, Ethan. That means a lot. But you should really look into getting them into some sort of counseling. Hey, sorry. The school just sent this. They say it came in early this morning. This is Lindsay Jordan at Montgomery West. I'm calling to request a substitute for the next two weeks. I have some personal business to attend to and I'll be out. I'm sorry, I can't explain more, but there's no need for anyone to worry. That's important. Please tell everyone not to worry. Thanks. Some days are beautiful. Some days are hard. Some moments take your breath away. Sometimes the feelings are too big for just one heart. That's why I'm here to help you find the way. You're doing better than you think you are. God's doing more than you think he is. Talk to me, tell me more. It's okay. You're doing better than you think you are. God's doing more than you think he is. Talk to me, tell me more. I've got all day. I may not know just how you feel, just how but my feel. hope for you is real. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm here. To help you find the way. Hey, self. How was your day? Pretty good. I might be making some friends, you know, getting a life. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There's this girl, Peyton. She goes to the church that we've been visiting and to my school. She's really sweet. She actually invited me to this thing at church on Saturday. Oh, great. Yeah, and on Friday, there's this Level Up Club I'm thinking about checking out. Level Up? What's that about? I don't really know. They said the goal was something about clarity and consciousness. I think it might help me fit in more, but not really care about fitting in as much. I don't know. The people seem interesting. That sounds interesting. I mean, it's, it's her voice, yes, it sounds like her, but... And she's 27 years old. I know that she is 27, but I'm telling you that Lindsay is one of those people that could join a cult and just drink the Kool-Aid. And I know that this Clarity Ranch place and this Redmond Quinn guy has something to do with it. And I guess maybe this does have something to do with me. Maybe it is connected to my past. I don't know. But 
please tell me that you'll just keep looking. We can't use resources looking for an adult who's decided to take some time off for some PTO. He's right, Grace. We can't go out there after she's left that mess. Okay, so here's something interesting. It seems that when he was a young boy, Redmond Quinn, that he used to spend his summers in New Orleans at his wealthy grandfather's house. And the grandfather, the old guy, was kind of a legend in the area and known as a master manipulator. And his last name was Dupree. First name, Damon. Oh, those my keys? How, how are you, Hazel? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Something on your mind? Actually, there is. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to say this. Don't rush into anything. Make sure you know what you're trying Will to do. Will you go out with me? Wow, there it is. Um. I'm gonna have to think about it. You know, I, I was hoping you saw this coming. Well, I was kind of hoping it was coming. But now, I mean, there's a lot going on with Grace and at our age, I just don't wanna. I get it, I get it. Take your time, think about it. In the meantime, would you allow me to put my phone number in your phone? That way you can text me whenever you're ready. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. See, you like purple. <laughs> I'm crazy about purple. <laughs> oh. Thank you. You're welcome. D-11 responding to the rancher's daughter call. All units be advised, three male teenage suspects fled on foot near Liberty and College Street. Over. Did you get a call out here? No. I thought you were taking the call with the break-in. Yeah. It's just some kids. I showed up and they scattered. So what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I was in the area, so I thought I'd drive by and check on Grace. Yeah, me too. I was just driving through here and uh, after our conversation yesterday and... Look. I think there's a camera in that tree. I mean, maybe it's a security thing? Or it could be someone watching her. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. I don't like the idea of her being here alone. 
Me neither. Be better if she was somewhere else, like her aunts. You know. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. Where are you going? I'm gonna go home. Why don't you go in there and tell her to stay at her aunt's? Wait, whoa, this was your idea. It was your idea too, so just go in there and tell her, would you? She's not gonna listen to anything I have to say. She may listen to you though. You got something? Yeah, maybe. Uh, did you find anything at the courthouse? No, just inmates and wardens. No chaplains. Okay, I uh, ran a search of the bios of clergy in the area and uh, found a few that mentioned being a prison chaplain a back few. in the early 90s. How long's the list? We've got six here. Most are retired now, but there is still one working. It says his church runs a soup kitchen or something down on St. Andrew's Street. All right, send me the name and address. I'll start there. Yeah, will do. As soon as I uh, get paid. Some of you already took the course when we offered it earlier at the high school, right? Like, Brandon, right? What, what did you think of it? Oh, yeah. Um, it was really good. I didn't even know what to say before, but, but now I, I think I could actually help somebody who's showing signs of suicide. So yeah, it's a really good course. All right. Well, hey, you guys. Thanks to Vic for joining us tonight, sharing about Safe Talk. You guys can sign up for that class online. It's happening in this room two weeks from tonight. Invite a friend, bring a family member. We hope to see you guys there. If you have any prayer requests before you leave tonight, come see me. Other than that, take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Um, how was the high school thing? It was great, actually. Had a lot of uh, kids more so than I expected. Asking really good questions. It was really cool, yeah. So, uh... Brandon. Hey, um, so you said to tell you about the prayer requests and stuff, so earlier you were talking about how people don't know what to believe or who to believe anymore, mm -hmm. and I've got these friends and they're getting into some really dark, occult-like stuff, mm -hmm. and I've just been pretty worried about them. Okay, well, Brandon, thank you for sharing that with me. Um, can I just ask, have you been praying for your friends? Yes, I have. Excellent, excellent. So I, it'd be my privilege to be praying for them tonight. Oh, thank so you. thank you again for sharing that. My parents are waiting on me, but thank you. Thanks, man. Take care. care. Thanks, Bye. man. We have seen more and more evidence of that lately. Really? The darkness, the occult, everything he's talking about. Detective James is saying that there's been a huge increase over the last year or so. So then what did you say? I said I would think about it. What? That poor man. Well, you don't want me to be doing something without really thinking about it, right? All you've been doing is thinking about it. Well, things are different now. What, because of me? Gracie, this has been a lot for you. I am fine. You better not be putting your life on hold because my mother has all of a sudden decided to show herself and you feel like I can't handle it. No. Don't y'all have any wine around here or something? Yeah, I'll go talk about it. Go. Gracie, you need to talk about your feelings. My feelings? Okay, let's see if we can get at the feeling here. The woman who you call my mother? All I remember about her is that she ruins lives. I remember feeling of pain, anger, confusion, lots of that. I tried to run away from all of that, and then I found you two, and you've been amazing. 
and now I'm trying to do something decent with my life. And you have a man who wants to treat you right. So, I mean, of course she shows up. Maybe we shouldn't have told her that. Oh no, I'm glad you told me, Aunt Janelle, because it all makes complete sense. All the stupid things I did as a teenager, all the nightmares I had, that wasn't because I was running away to the streets, it was because I was straight up cursed by my own mother. And she was in my life, what? Three, four years? I mean, it's anybody's guess because there's not even a record of my birth. Best guess though, I'm 30 and she still haunts me. But she doesn't get to use me to ruin your lives too. Now you get on that phone and you tell him that you will go. Still thinking on that. I didn't get to choose her to be my mother, but everyone that I love has to suffer for it. You, Lindsay, everyone. And did you hear that? Even the police chief knew who she was. It's like she's everywhere making sure that everyone knows exactly why I was born and why I'm here. Gracie, you was born to reflect God's glory, just as she was. <laughs> I know that. I know that I was made in his image. Up here, I know that. But in here, I don't feel that. You want to know what I feel? The same old burning hate. Can I help you, son? I hope so. Just really hungry and no one else will help. Soup kitchen's closed. But I do have some food in my office. Come on in. So what's your name, son? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, the Lord must have been looking out for you. So this place really clears out when the kitchen closes, huh? Yeah, I want everybody to make it home to their family spy. Take a seat if you like. So, in 95, you were a prison chaplain, right? Yes. Have we met before? No. No, we've never met. But I believe you might know a friend of mine, Ella Rousseau. Yes, I knew who Ella was. But everyone in the quarter knew who she was. So you knew her when she was in prison, right? No, I was only in the men's unit. I wasn't even there when she got arrested. You sure she didn't leave you something? Safekeeping. Lord, our students need you. Their parents need you. Our city needs you. Lord, I hate that Brandon's friends feel like they've got to look in the dark for answers. Lord, we really need you to show us how to pray right now. Lord, your word says that your light shines in the darkness and that the darkness can never extinguish it. That is exactly what we need right now. Lord, I am asking you to come and shine over our students and over their families, over Brandon and his friends. Lord, I pray that you would break through anything that these kids have gotten mixed up in and that you would be their light in the darkness. I pray that you would open their eyes and their hearts to the reality of how much you love them, how much you just want to fight for them. Lord, please come and rescue 
and refresh and revive. I am asking for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope you enjoyed breaking strongholds. Our prayer and our mission is to reach the brokenhearted with the hope and healing Christ provides. Breaking Strongholds is a unique show in that it's been completely funded through donations from people just like you and just like us. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're asking you to join our giving team. You can make a contribution of $5. We also have people that support us through donations of $25,000. Every sized contribution matters. We especially need monthly supporters. You can find out more about supporting this ministry by visiting reflectivemedia.org and clicking on the donate tab. And, and you know, this show is not just a show. Hmm. I mean, we have he, we've created a study guide with discussion questions that you can easily access on breakingstrongholds.com. We appreciate you and we're asking you to support us through prayer, through contributions, and through sharing this message of hope with somebody else. Mm -hmm.